Hello and welcome to session number 74 of Outlander's Guide to Lidaria. Hey guys! Hello! Hey, hey. hi! One. 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 Uh, Doing great. Welcome! Welcome back to this campaign. Uh, Dennis is still gone uh, for a bit longer and, and it's okay. I'll allow it. The rest of you, though, you are here for 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 me to play with you. Mm. Well, haha. That's, that's how D and D works usually. It it's just an excuse for the DM to like work through some issues. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, uh, let's jump into it. It's Sid. Hello. Hello. So. Uh, I have recap duties this this week, mm -hmm. uh, and my goal for this was to make so a me recap that is not useful and that is uh, unique to anything I've done before. And I hope yes. I succeeded at that. <laughs> okay. I hope this helps Matt. Helps Matt. Yeah, definitely will explain everything succinctly. I'm sure. Wonderful. <laughs> That's what I'm looking for. <laughs> so, All I right, have give me a shared moment. a screen. A screen. Let's Just see if... Whoa. I don't know what I'm looking at. <laughs> this, this is a thing that Austin drew on the table. This is playing the VOD at two times speed. <laughs> <laughs> very, <laughs> very useful. There's going to be a recap. There's going to be a long one. <laughs> <laughs> Just like randomly skipping between it. Pull the button on YouTube, press one on the numpad for a few seconds, and then jump to two, and then three, all the way to nine, and then just like summarize the end. Yeah, yeah. It's one of those super cuts where you get like five seconds or yeah, seven yeah. minutes. The cliff notes. <laughs> um. Yeah, I, I I don't think I want to give an intro to this. I just want you to leave you confused with what's going to happen right now. So. <laughs> okay. I'm Here ready to go. be confused. Can't be anything worse than Austin's done. Doubling down from dream radiant <gasps> Creepy clown drawn by a childlike mind. Rocks, <laughs> see my rocks. Watch the dark, this one barks. On patrol, watch this floor, one that glows with a strong odor. Cause ice won't play nice, pay the price, face the nice, frozen fall, ice wise grip, close down your eyes and your mind. Wouldn't it be neat to always never be asleep? Crystal jam, make a break, it's yours to take, it's time to wake. Up, stop, stop, devil's gone. Hee <laughs> you revel lot. What a gift, what a treat. It's a friend not made of me. Those empty eyes, we felt it. He's now made a felt like bits. Wrapped around his shoulders. Now met by puzzle boulders. Dim dots of dark dimensions. Midnight mankin mystery. Mystery mode, moreover. These dozen dead and daunted play purdue partner pursuits. Drip! Not fashion. Drip! No doctor. Drip! <laughs> Sizzles on your skin. Giant acid fabric snail. Bail out of bed and prep to cut. Scuffling from these wooden bugs. Plugs away their acid leaks. We can still that fireball. Halt! Pip loses a pretty rock. Unexpected major chalk. All too tired to walk out. Pips on rest, his talk had sound. Instrumental song, Ruse Interlude, provided by Tess Faye Jones. Thank you very much for <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the show. The fucking credit! <laughs> <laughs> so there you have it. <laughs> that was so good! <laughs> what just happened? That's so good! Heck it, it heck it, so boys, angsty. we can't top that. <laughs> oh, you weren't here last week. <laughs> no, I wasn't, and I still don't know what happened. <laughs> <laughs> One of the rocks is a dog! <laughs> 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 yeah. 
Yeah, so I think everyone understands what happened last time. So. <laughs> is there yeah. like a lyric sheet I can look at? <laughs> yeah, sure. I'll put that in the list. Yeah. Yes. Put that in the recaps. I want to listen to that all the time. <laughs> oh, no, you're in the not. car. <laughs> Pass me the aux cable. Oh, I miss the aux. <laughs> what, what do I name Old this? I have no clue. <laughs> because gangster rap. Rapspiration. <laughs> <laughs> Rap tiefling. That was one of the last Whoa. things I expected, and it was so good. Yes. Absol- <laughs> that was the goal. Absolutely. <laughs> oh. Wow. Damn. Yeah. So it's um, uh, the Daria time. I'm sorry, I can't top that with the rest of the, of the session. <laughs> All right, wrap it up. <laughs> Honestly, I say yeah. that we just let Sid just imagine and interpret what would have probably happened to this session, <laughs> develop a sequel rap, and then we just go to <laughs> the next session based on the events he's laid out for us. Could the next one be a diss track? Oh, <laughs> diss track. Against Winter. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. I, I imagined a better session. <laughs> This I is mean, how you DM. You don't have any players. You just rap. I, I, w- I would still give you inspiration if you did that, but I would be hurt. I could not, and I will not. <laughs> I might. <laughs> These rhymes. So, my, my emotions may not have any weight on this session, but they will have weight on the next session. <laughs> I'm the I'm the next recap, yeah. What a we, gift! What a uh, treat! It's a friend not made of meat. <laughs> well, you're not gonna be here next session, right, Matt? Oh, true. And it would be Dennis's, oh. and he will be back, so he he's has to recap something he's not here for. So that's what he gets for missing great. today. Love. <laughs> Why, but then I've got to do the same thing. <laughs> A week after. <laughs> oh no! It's the bad ending. We could we could give Austin next session, what? and then we do Dennis and Matt, and then me. So like the two of them don't have to recap a session they weren't there for, and pay, uh, sure, like sure. Austin just takes a you just take a turn in advance. Austin sure. is suddenly with we'll remember that and can't show up. <laughs> yep. Oh, I'll, I'm uh, planning on being sick, so. But, uh, I have a schedule. Okay. <laughs> so, for for the for the sake of Matt, um, the, the way uh, that <laughs> that I'm practically speaking, uh, <laughs> that we have been exploring the cave is that somebody. Um, Offers to roll a d12, and uh, uh, that's what determines uh, your your destiny. Uh, for now, though, you haven't. Uh, e- we finished the session with you guys attempting to take a long rest, and uh, only g- gaining the benefits of a short rest. Uh, so your characters wake up not feeling particularly any more rested than they did the day before. The elves have been spared such fate as uh, <laughs> their trance was successful, so Arin and uh, Viren are, are fine. But the rest of you find yourselves without your magic replenished save pip. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, um, yeah, awakening to a cave that is still very cold and feels even more hostile than before. Um... So, before you set off again, what would you like to do? That guy just had the weirdest dream. (laughs) What is it, Pip? You were in my mind saying really weird words (laughs) very quickly. (laughs) Was he rapping? Rapping at my chamber door. (laughs) <laughs> For a moment, I almost forgot that my life was ruined. <laughs> I 
this cave is playing tricks on us. We should find your granny sister sooner rather than later. Yeah. Now, uh, and uh, Tekka will point to the rock he left behind, um, like next to uh, Pip's bedroll. Mm -hmm. Pip, as you like, turn over to, to speak with Tekka, um, you find lying down right next to you a polished gray rock. What? Where did you come from, little guy? <laughs> did the gods send you to me? It is from this cave. Oh. One rock lost, one rock gained. You know, things are looking up in this world. <laughs> <laughs> I've decided not to give up yet. Thank you, Tekka. <clears throat> Did you still want to see if we can retrace our steps, see if we can find where your rock might have gone to? I mean, it can't have gone far as a rock. I don't care about that rock anymore. I've got this one now. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I wish all my campaigns had, like, pl their like, plots resolved <laughs> this quickly. I, mean, I, I just I just thought you cared about it more than that, but... I don't even... Uh, it's, it's fine. I, it's fine, I guess. It's If you don't actually care about your things, it's, we can keep going. I mean, if we happen to run into it along the way back, then, you know, I'd like it, but, you know, it's whatever. It's good to see you feeling better. Oh. Wh which, which way, then? Yeah, so uh, what is the cave, the layout of this cave? Is there a path we haven't taken? It, the current, uh, the, the place where you stopped to rest and where you were also attacked by, by the, the slugs and the various, and, and the little cockroach-like machines, um, only has, it's just a, a, a part of the cave that opens up a little bit wider, but it just has the direction you came from and then further up ahead, the direction you haven't gone to yet. So for now, it's just straight ahead. But the cave has had plenty of, of twists and crossroads, so you know it won't be... The journey will likely not be that easy. I say we move forward. Eventually, we will have to leave this cave. Perhaps we find it. Any preparations before you head off? Yeah, I'm gonna do one thing first. Uh, I'm gonna take out the um, the werewolf fur and blood, and I'm gonna go ahead and make my effigy appear like the werewolf. Okay. And uh, not gonna do anything with it just yet. Just have it prepared. Noted. Uh, how long does it take? Like 10 minutes, I think? 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, Pip is uh, seemingly playing with one of his creepy dolls while the rest uh, of the party is uh, um, g getting ready to leave. Uh, everybody cleaning up, uh, getting their own bedrolls uh, back in the backpacks and uh, <clears throat> eating something small and cold before being ready to set off. Um, Arid asks if you want him to take the lead again. At least for the time being. Um. No. <laughs> I'll do it. <laughs> oh, uh. Pip, you, you know how to navigate caverns? Yeah. <laughs> Arin <laughs> questioningly glances at the rest of the group and then shrugs and says, Knowing Why shrug. Not? <laughs> when you were in the lead, I lost a rock, so... <laughs> uh, just let, let us know if you start feeling uh, drowsy again, then we can take over. <clears throat> yeah, okay. 
Harin takes his place in the back of the group. <laughs> <laughs> oh. His job has been taken over by a kid. Alright, Austin, you roll a d12. Well, I am. Um, Matt hasn't had a, a turn, but uh, you'll be next. Well, <gasps> nailed it. That's either the best one or the worst one or the most mid. <laughs> Another staircase begins to grow out of the floor, out of his doll. <laughs> okay, so Pip, you take the lead. You're holding on to your your squeak doll. Every once in a while, you ask it for its opinion on where to go, uh, whether you listen or not. It, it doesn't particularly matter. You just uh, Following. Oh, maybe you should go that way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, you follow your own idea of what you perceive to be progress. Whenever you come at a crossroad of some kind, whenever you have an option of going left or right, uh, um, what what method do you have to determine even which which way you want to go? Pip licks the stones on the floor, and mm -hmm. whichever way tastes saltier is the way he's going. Okay. There's a couple of times when your tongue gets stuck. And uh, you, you need a party member to warm Help. it up in order to <laughs> yeah, detach it. But besides the occasional uh, ice licking accident, um, the group makes progress forward. You reach the, um, the, the, the. There's a moment when you get to a crossroad and you take a left, and eventually you realize that that passageway takes you all the way around in a loop back on that same crossroad through the right passageway. And so there's only one other way left to go. And so you go forward and you reach the end of your journey. The deepest recess of the cave lies before you. A simple wall of ice. A dead end. At this point, Pip, you've tried every other route and explored in every direction. And there's really nowhere else left to go. What do you do? All right, Professor. Pip covers his ears and steps back. <laughs> Are you sure? You know I'm, what I'm to gonna, do. I'm not going to ask a second time, I bet. They... I would feel like you would maybe have a more creative solution, but continue, I guess. I, I probably do, but uh, I mean, it if, would take if you can't longer think of any... than an instant thought. If you can't think of anything, that's fine. No, this is sounding a little condescending. No, it's fine, it's fine. I'm sure you know best. <laughs> I, you know, maybe, maybe it is, uh... Okay, I have an idea. Uh, I'm gonna... I'm gonna use a second level spell slot. And... A second level? A second level spell slot. I'm gonna downcast fireball. Uh, it's a special technique what? that I learned. That <laughs> uh, no, uh, we're gonna use a uh, flaming sphere or, or elemental sphere, as it's gonna be colloquially known. I guess <laughs> uh, to just persistently deal with this instead of just one big kaboom. Okay, when you say deal with this, are you are you trying to melt the cave? Uh, no, thunder. A thunder? You're trying to yeah. shatter the cave? Yeah. It's like it's like a wizard's drill. <laughs> Think of like an, like a like a like a like a jackhammer, but with more dubstep. <laughs> and I control it with my mind. Okay, well that's <laughs> and it just starts working. That that conjured an image in my mind. <clears throat> okay. uh, he's reminiscing of the good times against mechanical birds and mechanical crabs before they were all on our side. Okay. Uh, so picture. <laughs> uh, let's let's like picture it. So this is the passage. I would much prefer you draw this. <laughs> and you the guys thunder are like, hammer. You guys. <laughs> 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 the 
shenanigans are already happening. No! <laughs> Just, you know, why deal 20 or, or, or 8d6 when you can deal 20d6 over time? It look like I have a 7. So <laughs> it's the cave equivalent of Fleck. <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay. Uh, you're... Whenever you conjure your, your elemental sphere and it's made of thunder, <laughs> um, it's a hardly visible thing. It's more like swirling winds, the, the faintest hint of smoke in it. And you can see the uh, everything behind it through its uh, transparent form being distorted in almost like waves just outward. Uh, you control this, uh, uh, this energy, pushing it forward towards the the wall in the back of the cave uh, and you see the wall that uh, the section um, like let's say from here to here uh, and you're pushing your sphere right here in the middle uh, so this entire section remains completely unaffected but you can see cracks developing um, light ones because it's a bit further away but Cracks developing here and here. Uh, well, the professor is, is nothing if not exploitative of weakness, uh, and he, uh, going to. I can do that. Smash it into the cracks. How long does your sphere last? Uh, is it a minute? Uh. Ten rounds. Okay. So, uh, you move the sphere and you start pushing through here. And much like a drill, the, the sphere is essentially making this hole as it begins to go through and through and through and through. And then you hear a sound of like something falling apart, shattering. And that's about a time when uh, your your spell runs its course. Dope. So you have some kind of passageway here in this specific spot. This part of the wall from this moment onward has remained perfectly free of any damage. Well, it is a bit more elegant. Less likely to cave in the whole business. I suppose we'll trust you on that one. I did say less likely. I, I, I assume no liability for whatever injuries may come from. Uh, I, I am not a, an architect or a geologist. I'm a wizard. I think I heard something break. Uh, the spirit of the cave. <laughs> <laughs> or mine. It has crumbled to my uh, unbending will. I'll send Squeak to go check it out. Pipple that throws a doll idea. off of his shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> Just plops sadly on the floor. Oh. Do you want to fling the, the doll through the hole? No. Fling the squeak. <laughs> maybe, maybe, we, maybe we can find your replacement squeak, too. Since you replaced your rock. Yeah. Alright, I'm gonna look in the hole. It's a good thing us humans can see in the dark. <laughs> You're climbing, climbing through? Yeah. Okay. Here, here's what it looks like. You, you, you go through the hole. Uh, since Pip being Pip, being, being the smallest one around, um, it's easy enough for you to fit through here. Anyone else, particularly the Thorbolgs, would uh, struggle a little bit. Uh, <clears throat> but you go through this hole and you turn around and you make it out into... Uh, an opening that seems to be the continuation of the cave, just like this. Uh, there is shards of ice everywhere. The the sound of something breaking was just this section of the wall uh, falling down. Jackpot! There is more back here. Hold on, let me make the door wider for you guys. We're gonna create a bonfire in that uh, hole. Just make mm -hmm. it wider. Yeah, yeah. You melt down some of the ice in order just to widen the opening a little bit. Uh, this part of the wall remains still completely untouched by your magic, but you, you have a passageway to just go around.
Hello? The rest of the group, <laughs> one by one, <laughs> can, can come through just fine. I think he is gone. We have lost him. <laughs> I'm literally waiting for you guys. Let's go. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, Tekka will pass yeah. right on through. Absolutely. Let's go. Um, you each make it through just fine, and there is more cave to explore. Matt, would you like to roll a, D a d12 for me? Of course. Whoa, 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 whoa. Huh. Nice. Yeah. Nice. <clears throat> <clears throat> okay, with Pip still leading the group, eventually, you all begin to hear something. It's far away, and it's an odd thing to hear underground. You're not dubstep. <laughs> <laughs> the professor is humming a very discordant melody <laughs> under his breath. Oh, big one, one. What you're hearing is the rumbling of thunder and the howling of winds. <laughs> which. Yes, it kind of sounded like I was setting up for the dubstep again, but no, this is... <laughs> <laughs> the sound of thunder, you say? <laughs> We've established canonically that thunder just sounds like dubstep in this setting. Uh, Pip, the, whenever you come at different branches in the cave, you can always tell that the, the storm seems to be coming from down specific tunnels from specific directions. What would you like to do? We should go towards the storm. Right? Uh, that's, I mean, generally ill-advised, but generally. But. I mean, if you want to, we can go. I'm going. Bye. Let's go. <laughs> Is this just just riding ahead? Are okay with this? <laughs> I mean, if Pip is running towards the storm, then Tekka is gonna like chase him to try. Yep. To... I'm gonna oh. Pip has clipped out of bounds. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Stop trying to speed run my cave. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Um, you begin to pick <clears throat> specifically the the tunnels where the sound is louder, and then you're beginning to feel it, the wind blowing back against you, pushing you back. At first, it's easy enough to keep going despite the winds, but then it becomes a bit of a struggle and your pace slows down. You have to lean forward a little bit to keep going. Um, <clears throat> every once in a while, one of you might tumble away and the, uh, the fearbolts are able to catch you and just pull you forward with them. <clears throat> um... Everybody roll a strength save. Uh oh. Professor and I look at each other in horror. <laughs> <laughs> uh -oh. oh, that's. Wait. No, minus three. It's 13. Incredible. We're fine. Okay. Um, one thing, Matt, are you still good with controlling the um, uh, Aaron? Yeah. Okay. So go ahead and rule for him. And who had Brook last time? Me. Okay. Here you go. Oh, jeez. Can have the mini, so I remember Ooh. it. So I only mm -hmm. have to roll for Sunny. Should be everybody. <clears throat> Is the eleven Brook? Uh yeah. <laughs> what a what a mess. Okay. 
Um, Arin isn't particularly strong, but he is a, he's, he's a ranger, he's an explorer, he's familiar with, with the elements and with uh, um, the occasional bad weather. Um, and he understands the the twists, the turns, the shapes of the walls in a way that he always manages to find just the right nook to avoid the worst of the wind. Um, the the rest of you are being thrown around, uh, having a terrible time. Uh, Tekka, you're, you're the only one who kind <clears> of <throat> manages to never actually fall. Uh, you're, you're always maintaining your balance. You're using your your staff to keep pushing you forward. Um, uh, there's multiple times when some of you accidentally drop something. There's a moment when the doll goes flying and somebody... Uh, Sunny is also doing reasonably well, so Sunny goes to get it. Um, and uh, this lasts for a while. Uh, the sound of thunder gets really, really close to you guys. There's moments where it almost feels like a lightning just struck right next to you, but it's only ever the sound. You never see a, a flash of light. And eventually the winds calm down and uh, the the cave uh, that otherwise in appearance hasn't really changed throughout this, uh, it returns to somewhat of a normality and the howling wind is now far behind you. Um... Pontifex, can you roll uh, a perception check real quick? Yes. Wow. Okay. Um, the 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 rest of the party is like adjusting their their hair, uh, making sure they're doing okay. Um, you glance around. You look down at your hands. And then immediately realize that throughout that whole ordeal, um, your astrolabe is gone. What? Hold on, I have to go back. Back for that. If it were between it and you, it would be it. I will be back. What are you expecting to find? My astrolabe. Fine, I'll follow you then. I, I need it. It is. Uh, I can't do my magic without it. Not really. Uh, uh, you mean not really? Are you, sh are you sure it's worth going back for it? It's. I mean. It you is worth everything, yes. It's got, like, his life history and everything in it, It has too. all... Uh, the entirety of my magical work is inside of it. I thought you said it was important. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh, snap! Oh, she got you and good! Consequently, the sanctity of our continued living is inside of it. Uh, yeah. Fine. Uh... Go, go on, then. Well, while we're going back, we might as well look for my <laughs> rock, too, so... <laughs> I lied, I'm, I do actually miss it. <laughs> <laughs> Who is going back? Uh, Tekka is. Pip is. <laughs> Not particularly keen on it. Tekka, mm. Tekka Pontifex Pip? Or, um... Is the entire group group going? I, th I think if everyone else is very adamant, Viren will go, but she's very not. She's not into this. Probably Brooke and Sunny wouldn't want them to go alone, so like the uh, eventually there is an agreement that everybody should go. Yeah, besides, if they start <laughs> falling asleep. Fair. So, you all head back. Uh, you turn around uh, and you begin to uh, retrace your steps. And as the wind 
you, you can feel the the very very chill wind on your skin again it's now blowing in the opposite direction once again against you it's like the cave itself is trying to slow your progress and slow your progress it does everybody roll an investigation check Investigation, you say? Oh my goodness! <laughs> 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 what is it? Where is my astral lamp? Help me! Bonifex <laughs> tears open a rift and peers into the universe. Where is my ball? <laughs> Okay. Every time Pontifex rolls investigation, something significant happens, whether it's a painted rock or peering through time and space. Get that natural 20 out of here, Sid. No one cares about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, actually, constellation I would have theoretically been able to... a uh, guidance okay. on this as well, right? So, Looking for his thing. But <laughs> <laughs> maximum... Oh my goodness! <laughs> it's the 37? highest possible roll. You just roll a thirty-seven on investigation. <laughs> yeah. Okay, it's, yeah. it's it's only a twenty-nine. It rolled your two twenties and added them. Not isn't it? No, no, no. That's two twenties. Oh, it's not two twenties. Oh. oh no, it's a, a, a d twenty with a hit net twenty, and then it's a d four because I'm a Vidalkin, and it's one of my two uh, she is. special things, and, and then another d four from guidance. Mm -hmm. That's it. Insane. Jesus Christ. <laughs> The you really want this back. nasty at two things, and it's investigation and dragon chess. <laughs> <laughs> the, the nat 20 from Sid, is that Brooke? That is Brooke, Okay, yeah. that's funny. Oh so, like, uh, essentially, as you're all just uh, trudging back, it's about halfway, right, right at the center of the storm, that Brooke notices there is a small dent in the ground um, whose size matches the the kind of uh, of indent that uh, um, Pontifex's precious, precious, precious astrolabe would have made if it had fallen on that particular spot and then based on the direction that the wind is blowing now uh, Brooke thinks that it might have rolled down a particular direction and, and like he's about to point that way and he's halfway through explaining this and he like actually did did well uh, but by the time he's done he notices that like Pontifex had already noticed all of this like five minutes earlier <laughs> had already left and is already back with uh, the astrolabe uh, you have found, found it. it you have retrieved it okay we're good now we can go back um and your role is so good that by the time you guys finally make your way again back through uh, uh, against the storm, uh, that Matt, you notice something else. Uh, and I'm going to just uh, uh, text it to you privately on Discord. Okay. Uh, does Pontifex notice Pip's rock? Um, okay. That's an interesting question. It is. Fair okay. enough. So you've all made it uh, um, out of the storm part of the cave. Uh, the astrolabe <laughs> has been <laughs> rescued. Um, and you're all gathered. You're kind of... All of you are kind of bruised. Um, all of you have fallen a few times. Uh, it, it's It's been unpleasant overall, being thrown around by these strong winds while on slippery ice. Uh, you're glad to have... You're not happy you went through that multiple times, but you're happy you left it behind you. Does anybody else have anything we need to go back for? I mean, we probably should have asked earlier, but last call. Uh, no. No, I think we got everything. So we're ignoring Pip's rock. I, I, I guess we can go on, on we'll, our way back out. We'll get it on the way back. We'll get it, uh, yeah, when we come to leave. Unless there's another door down here. 
doors everywhere we go. <laughs> <laughs> How many people did Jamuel... Hmm. <laughs> that is a dangerous question, best left unasked. <laughs> Oh no, the countdown is beginning. <laughs> Brace yourselves. Okay. Uh, ready to continue? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In that case... Um, we can start using a D8 from, from now on. Oh, What's that mean? Through. <clears throat> we've oh, been through a lot of these. We've enough rooms. Yeah. Ah, uh, who volunteers? So uh, <laughs> I was, I, I was like, I'm next on rotation, so... Yeah. Go ahead. Oop. Oop. This is fine. Oh, nice! It's either the best or the worst. <laughs> Is Pip still leading or is someone else? Uh, someone else is now. Pip got distracted with something. Take it! <laughs> Take a charge! Let's go! Okay, Taka. That totally makes sense because, uh, um, much like at, at some point everybody had started hearing wind through the cave, um, your sense of hearing is so sharp now that, uh, um, you're, you're using the sound of the storm behind you to maintain a consistent sense of directions and head mm -hmm. in uh, away from it as much as you can. And then That's eventually, cool. once the storm is really far behind you and you feel like you guys have been at this for a very long time, uh, you're almost considering maybe stopping for a nap, but then you hear something new, different. It's a voice. And it's very far away still. And it sounds somewhat feminine. And the one thing you realize about it is that it's not really saying anything. It's not really having a conversation, but rather it's singing. What would you like to do? I can sense someone else ahead. Keep well, I can room. hear it. Yeah, can everyone else hear it? Or is it because of technology? Not hearing? at this moment. Yeah. Oh, okay. I believe you. There is nothing we can do to prepare, so we keep moving. I mean, do we want to, I don't know, scout ahead, take a look before we just start charging him blindly? What do you have in mind? I mean, I'm decently good at moving around unseen, unheard. I can take a look ahead, see what we might be up against. Then do it. I'll report back soon. Uh, while she's gone, uh, the professor is going to go over to tech. Uh, and like lean kind of close to his ear and uh, and whisper to hey, is there a reason why you are hiding the rock what rock a peeps rock I do not is, have is the like rock dangerous or and Pontifex is going to reach into his pocket and as if a magician pulling a rabbit out of a hat Pull a rock out of your pocket. <laughs> <laughs> a small and rock? blue rock. What, what are, are sort of rocks? sorcery is this K playing at? Normally, I would say wizardry, but uh, oh, you didn't do this? No. Are you sure? Why would I lie? I have no use for a rock. You, you're getting a little bit agitated, and I'm just making sure that everything is, you know, good in uh, your head. You're, you're feeling okay. I know there is a, a 
business you're dealing with. You could sense I had a rock before even I did. Is this some magic? I become very perceptive when I am looking for uh, things that are important to me. And in the moment of finding my ball, I noticed this. I have an eye for detail at times. But uh, okay, it, it, it may be best that uh, you return this to Pip. No. You should return this. You found it. Not me. Uh, but if he asks me where I found it, I'm going to tell him in your pocket, and that is going to cause problems. On the other side of the it. room, you see Pip sliding on the ice. Wee. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he is known to hold a grudge. If you refuse to tell him, I will. All there right. is no reason to hold this back. Okay, I, I will try to maybe distract him yeah, so, so he forgets that specific uh, part. And the professor is going to walk over to Pip uh, with uh, hiding the rock behind his back like an old Watch man out. hiding candy. What? Pip is sliding towards the professor. Bonk. An unmoving oh. wall of old man in <laughs> heavy metal armor. <laughs> <laughs> my knee <laughs> oh your days of being an adventurer have come to an end no <laughs> time to become a city guard I don't want to do that okay well uh, how about that something you do want okay uh, do you want to say a magic trick yeah I know it is, is less uh, fantastic in the world of actual magic but uh, <laughs> I assure you, this one is actually not magic. It is just me doing a uh, clever uh, misdirection. Uh, here's your this rock. This is getting less exciting by the... <laughs> what? <laughs> he's just going to hold out his hand with the rock in his hand. Where, Where did you find it? Yeah, but that would be telling, wouldn't it? Yeah. Cool trick. Thanks. Wow. The professor's going to leave. <laughs> he's going to leave very quickly. <laughs> I missed you. <laughs> Shuffle across the ice out of that situation, sweating in a way that only a frog can. I'm gonna make sure. I'm gonna make sure you never get out of my sight again. <laughs> I'm gonna put you. Leash. In. I'm gonna put you in a bottle. <laughs> I put uh, it in a bottle. <laughs> <laughs> uh. I want to roll Rattles insight around. and get a and get a read on Pontifex if he did tell <laughs> the truth. Um, go ahead and roll insight, and Matt, uh, um, just roll a d twenty, and like you can add, uh, like in your mind, whichever is a modifier for whichever skill you are using, whether it's persuasion or deception. All right. <laughs> and then. Oh. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Unless it's negative. <laughs> The professor, uh, he didn't seem to come to you out of, uh, with a feeling to gaslight you. <laughs> You're not getting vibes of gaslighting, old man. Uh, he did genuinely seem, uh, like if, like he thought there might be a reason you had taken it and are hiding it, and he was down to keep the secret. He just needed to know. That's that's kind of the, the thing getting. Uh, he was ready to uh, to work together with you uh, to keep away this uh, potentially dangerous rock from Pip because he did not know, and maybe you did. Hmm. Okay. And upon your bewilderment, <laughs> he just didn't care anymore and returned the rock. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually, uh, Viren comes back. What did and, I find? Um, so, directly up ahead, um, Viren was able to find an opening in the cave where the singing was coming from, but nobody was there to actually sing. The singing was just echoing between the walls, almost as if it was coming from the walls. Uh, if there was anything there, it was nothing that either spotted her or wanted to bother her. 
And when she comes back, she just sort of shrugs and there's definitely singing. It doesn't seem particularly hostile. There's no one I could see causing it. It's just there. Seems safe enough to proceed. Then we keep moving forward. You should also know that teacher has found Pip's rock. There will be oh. no need to search. Oh, oh, good. Where was it? It was magic. <laughs> oh. Uh, yeah, I think Tekka heavily side eyes Potomac says when Pip says that. <laughs> I am dabbling in there. And doing magic that is not actual magic. Can you bring my parents back too? <laughs> I am working on it. I brought mine back, so you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe once. Let's try once to keep a closer eye on your things. I put it in a bottle. Let's go. Just don't I, lose the bottle. What? Well, they, this what? actually brings up a. a, a potential problem. I think there is a, maybe some sort of a, one moment. Uh, the professor, I'm going to use my feature to instant cast attack magic as a ritual. Uh, is there any magic going on in the air in this area? In this area right now? Uh, let me see. Let yeah, me see, the professor see. is worried that there's some kind of enchantment magic or illusion magic or something. Uh, a curse of some kind that is causing us because him losing the astrolabe is, like, incredible. Uh, so he's... The only thing he can explain that with is magic. That something, like, messed with his perception or something and that he didn't realize it had left his hand for, like, the first time ever. Okay. So, in this section of the cave where you guys are right now, it's kind of... It's kind of a smaller tunnel. Uh, perhaps three of you could be standing side by side uh, and no more than that. Uh, it's not particularly wide. <clears throat> and it is just a straight tunnel uh, that opens up uh, in the direction you just came from and that's where Pip was uh, was playing uh, and sliding around on the ice. Um, so in this kind of narrow space you can just walk back and forth to cover the entirety of it with your detect magic and there is nothing that you detect that is out of place. There's all of your usual magic items and uh, nothing in addition to that or less than that. Um, this reminds me, this, this came up in the past and I, I think I forgot a detail. I think didn't the professor cast detect magic like semi recently, and he picked up something from uh, from Virian that he like wasn't aware of? Didn't this come up before? Uh, Maybe I'm just imagining this. I'm Maybe drawing I'm a blank right now. Was it? Was there something? Did, did Virian pick up magic items? Is, is it maybe the the amulet from the wolf? Maybe the amulet from the wolf. That would be the only thing I could think of. Maybe that it was something that the professor like wasn't aware of because he was like, you know, we kind of have a catalog of magic items in our group and he especially is aware because he can extract magic and mm. learn it from those things. So he tends yeah. to like keep I, track I of what people have. I genuinely don't remember yeah. what I might have been. If the what, only what's thing... What's the amulet of the wolf? She's got a necklace on and I, I guess maybe it's a little magic. Is it? DM? Yeah. She also has her star boba on it. Oh, okay. Ah. Well, well, those aren't magic. Yeah. Come on, let me let me let, uh, so me, let me check. Because that's the only thing I can think of that I would have picked up that the players don't know about, or the players uh, know about, uh, but the party wouldn't know yeah, about. Yeah, it's it's not even magical actually. Um, yeah. Okay, maybe I'm just in a, in a moment of delirium. Uh, too much medication. Anyways. <laughs> Sorry, I genuinely yeah, the, the, don't recall. That's okay. Yeah. I'm probably wrong. Um, uh, but the professor casts that magic and then it explains. Uh, for me to have misplaced uh, the astrolabe and for Pip to have lost the rock, uh, I'm going to assume that there is something more uh, afoot, something that is messing with us. Uh, uh, not detecting magic, but I don't know if it detects curses and hexes. But something is wrong, so... 
uh, rather than just simply keeping an eye on our own belongings, try to keep an eye on each other's belongings. Uh, you see me misplace something precious, obviously. I'm perhaps not in my right mind, and vice versa. Uh, something is happening. We'll have to watch each other's backs, then. I'll watch Is... Tekka's. I'm watching it. Maybe I'll make it's sure nobody keep an eye on it. what is most... Uh, uh, ...dangerous to whatever could be thwarting us. Obviously, uh, my most powerful thing is the astral. Without it, I'm uh, severely crippled. So, for it to... ...try to get rid of it makes sense. Uh, for Tekka, I imagine it is his magical staff, and for Virian, her uh, sword or shield or both. Uh, same for Brook. So perhaps keep a special note of each other's primary armaments, I guess. If something is trying to thwart us, it is trying to make us less dangerous. Uh, yeah, I think that's the. Oh, go on. Um, I can go ahead and finish this conversation. Yeah. Yeah, as Fontfex is mentioning that, uh, Tekka is taking off his backpack and just checking up on Ollie, making sure he <laughs> wears <is> Ollie. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> he was most precious. Uh huh. <laughs> the greatest weapon of all. Absolutely. Yeah, that'd be all. Uh, for uh, since this came up, whoops, I didn't mean to close that tab. There would be like a single magic item. Uh, that is not a new. He would have sensed already on Viren multiple times, but he has never seen her, uh, like, produce it. Uh, it's just somewhere in her bag, and this is a really weird call to make, but I think the school of magic will be transmutation. Um, and it's, like, very faint. It's a very, very small kind of enchantment. Uh, so you can add that to your notes. It's, and, and she has added it from, from the very beginning. It's just an item that Pontifex has never actually seen or take out or use. We figured it out. Oh. Okay. Uh, ready to proceed? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh, the next D8 roll? Me, 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 me. All right. How much does Ollie weigh? How much does like an adult pangolin weigh? Great question. Uh, I can find that out. Find it out while I find my spot in the notes again. I have no idea where I was. 10 to 60 pounds. That's a very wide range. What kind of right. range? Yeah. <laughs> uh, onward you go. Towards the, the singing. Uh, which... Thus far, only Tekka had heard an Ambirium once she went ahead and then returned like 15 or 20 minutes later. Um, so you you keep going through the cave, specifically following the sound of the voice, until you reach a section of the cave that uh, um, were behind the very, very thin layer of frost on the walls. You can see that the stone behind it uh, is full of uh, colorful bright metallic layers uh, that are just stacked on top of each other and the colors are are kind of um, desaturated just from coming through the, the frost that covers them and the singing fills this area uh, it it's loud but not loud to the point uh, of hurting perhaps Tekka's ears that are a tiny bit more sensitive um, might be displeased with being <laughs> right in the center of this um, but as you stand there and you just try to kind of figure out where the singing is coming from it becomes more and more apparent that <gasps> the walls themselves are singing it's ferrarium what? it's ferrarium what? Oh, Frarium. it is from the list. This must be one of the medals. Tin Art told us it sings. Aha. Uh -huh. uh, literally, apparently. Uh, but a metal? In yeah. the ice. Yeah. Alright, Tekka, get out your pickaxe. 
Wait, I have wait. no pickaxe, but I've what? Pick what? what? Let's just melt away the ice. That guy always has everything. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have an attachment for your staff that's a pickaxe? <laughs> nope. Pip's got oh. a bonfire next to the ice. Okay. Um, melting away the thin layer of ice is easy enough, and you're exposing the the natural color of the wall behind it, and you can see the uh, unrefined singing metal directly behind. Now we could use the gem of creation to create a pickaxe, but we also <laughs> could have used it to create the frarium. <laughs> With the, I have a, I have a question for you. When, mm? uh, for the purposes of create or destroy. Does ice qualify as water? Sure. Or destroying? Oh, let's go with yes. I can clear away the water. I've already done ice. it. It's gone. Yeah, but like I could do more. Yeah, well, okay. Why How don't much you of this just... stuff do you want? <laughs> what? How much of this singing metal do you need? All of it. With it. Then uh, you're not the, done. The shopping list was uh, at least one ingot's worth. Yeah, but I want more, so... <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Do you want me, or do you just want to do do this way? I don't want to, like, interrupt your creative process. Do you, I mean, do How you, are you have being... to melt are you the ice? At the... Sorry. Does your wizard jackhammer work for this? Uh, it would, but it also is known to destroy metal. Uh, so, no, I have a, a much uh, better spell for this. Okay. Uh, I will remove uh, just the ice and nothing else. None of the mineral, stone, soil, or metal. Oh, hold on. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Here's how I'm interpreting this. And, Winther, you can correct me if this is wrong. But it's not like bits of metal suspended in ice. It's the it's metal is in the walls. It's a deposit. And then there's yeah, yeah. there's ice, it, like on it. The the, on the, the walls. ice yeah the ice was just of the outer uh huh uh huh yeah like that yeah. So you guys are in here and you are able to melt the ice. So now you yeah have the metal's to... not just gonna fall out when the ice <laughs> is gone. I assume this was like some kind of metal shavings or something, something that's like atomized and it's just been in the water and then frozen. Uh, have you ever seen okay. like a formation of banded iron and it has like layers? It's like, it's like that. Okay. Oh. So there's like striations of singing metal. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if I have a spell to extract striations of singing metal. Uh, that's I'm a little... <laughs> I don't have... I'm not the Conjuration Wizard. Do you have... Can you make things bigger? Because I have a firecracker. You could like, enlarge it into TNT. I am uh, not a <laughs> transmutation wizard. <laughs> I've got mushrooms. Got a lamp. Hey, are we just trying to just break off the metal? Yeah, yeah. Uh, then I can let you have fun while you do it. You seem to want to t t make this a little more personal. Okay. Uh, okay, uh, uh, face the wall, and <laughs> the professor's gonna like, put his hands on your shoulders and like What's turn happening? you away from the group. Professor? <laughs> uh, don't, whatever you do, don't look back at us. Don't face towards anything you are not willing to destroy. Okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, and, uh, are you watching the wall? I'm watching the wall, Professor. Okay, and he's going to walk him to be about 14, 13 feet back from the wall. Okay, now take a deep breath. Uh, and I'm going to cast Dragon's Breath. Uh, and I'm going to uh, scribe wizard this into thunder damage. And I am giving Pip thunder breath for a minute. <laughs> Exhale. If you can feel a really powerful burp <laughs> coming 
up <laughs> your throat. This dubstep. <laughs> blah, 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 your, blah, your teeth. Funneling out of his face. Your teeth rattle <laughs> in your skull. Why is there uh, a dubstep in this cave? I don't understand. It's not. It's, it's, this is supposed to be Misery's womb, not dubstep cave. <laughs> <laughs> the acoustics in here are incredible. <laughs> now, Pip, keep belching. Keep, uh, uh, just ramble on and on and on. And don't stop. His walk forward slowly. <laughs> He's just trying to help Pip, like, auger his way into this metal wall. <laughs> and just shred it as much as possible. Um, yeah, well... The... <laughs> <laughs> this maneuver was supposed to be saved for my cat, but circumstances arose last time and it didn't work, so you'll have to do. I've been holding on to this gimmick for so long. The sound, this this odd sound halfway between a burp and the roar of thunder. It echoes throughout the cave. You can no longer hear this thing. And there's bits of stone and metal flying everywhere. And by the time the minute is up, there is this massive gash uh, here in the wall. And there's large chunks of that uh, uh, precious stone on the ground. So some are really small pieces. Uh, and, and then there's larger bits that are easier to like pick up and collect. Um, even after the spell runs its course, the cave remains silent, as if the singing metal has just silenced itself uh, f following this display. It just collapses onto the ground, face up. Oh, I feel so sick. I think you killed it. I killed it. <laughs> I killed the rocks. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's not singing anymore. Does it have to be singing to work? Uh, I, do, I don't know enough about rocks. You, you're uh, the rock expert. I, I don't know. Hit it. Yeah, let me hit it against the, the ground. Sing. <laughs> Sing. Sing for me. <laughs> As you dejectively collect. <laughs> <laughs> Is he the... <laughs> this is so true. <laughs> <laughs> don't face anything you don't want to blow apart, Morty. You <laughs> face the wall. I am okay, <laughs> Professor. Does <laughs> <laughs> it begin to dejectedly the check? You pick up the pieces of the wall. <laughs> um. And, uh, well, in the process of collecting them all in a, in a bucket, I don't know, do you have a bucket? You put them somewhere. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we we use the gym anywhere with a bucket. Create a bucket. <laughs> <laughs> as, if, as if shyly and uh, uh, with a bit of uncertainty, but the cave slowly resumes its singing. Very quiet at first. And then as minutes pass, it's back to its original... Um, a volume and the pieces of rock that you have collected they they're contributing their own singing it's it's quieter it's there oh uh, are we good uh my mouth is numb <laughs> yeah, yeah i would say you get used to it but i don't know i've never done that do you need a minute? Do you want to sit down for a little while? Just <laughs> until your mouth stops being numb? I mean... Oh, there goes my last baby tooth. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yep. not to be insensitive, but does your mouth, like, need to work? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, the squeak does all of the heavy lifting, no? Professor! That was Even really mean. Even your complaints are not from your own mouth, so is it that big of a it's, deal? It's hard to explain. It's a little bit of both. Like, obviously, 
obviously the the voice that I have is my own. Like when it comes through Squeak, it's still my voice. Oh, I thought it was like magical modulation to make it sound like you for a sense of familiarity. Uh, huh. If it is I coming mean, from his mouth, it is his breath and his vocal cords doing all of the work, you know? I, 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 magic. Uh, you know, that's what you actually, if that's what you actually sound like. What if you sound different than that? What if hey, what my if voice changed like while, while I have been under this curse? Like, what if when I get this noose off of me, what if like, I'm a, I'm like, got a man voice, like, oh, hey. What if you actually sound like Squeak? Oh, <gasps> Whoa! <laughs> that would... Huh. You know, I don't think we have to worry about that part. I bet I got a voice like Tekka now. Uh, you just have to pick up on the mannerisms and then you'll be very cool. Alright. We should... We should... We should go. Okay, don't try to make your voice sound deeper. <laughs> okay, Professor. <laughs> <laughs> Otacon, what does the scouter say about his power level? Who's, who's taking the lead? I got this. Okay. Go Since it. we're just sort of uh, cycling around, and I'm I'm feeling on my A game right now. The Phoenix. All right. So. Uh, Pontifex, once uh, the pieces of destroyed wall have all been gathered, and uh, uh, you you are done considering what Pip's voice might sound like and how his communication method through Squeak even actually works, um, you confidently take the lead, and for the time being, the cave that leads away from this particular area, it's just uh, a single tunnel. You don't really have to like make any decisions on whether to go right or left. You just proceed on through. Um, can you roll me a perception check? Yes. I'm just on fire tonight. Oh my god. Let's go. <laughs> it's <Okay>. so good. <laughs> um, you're walking down this one tunnel, and about perhaps five to ten minutes later, uh, you you come to a sudden stop. So suddenly that uh, part of uh, your group behind you bumps into your back, but you are this immovable old man wall. Um, you saw something glistening down on the ground, and uh, you managed to stop before stepping on it. Uh, and what you're seeing, oh, what like as you kneel forward to take a closer look at it, is a very, very, very thin piece of string that it is stretched from one side of the tunnel to the other. Whoop! Hey, everyone, stop. Oh, stop. stop. Uh, yep. Uh, uh, you shall not pass. Uh, the, uh, that is either a, a, a tripwire uh, or a... a spell component for an alarm spell in either case we don't want to trigger it but, but if it is dispelled then uh, uh, we can't go past it either i, I don't know how, how know machinations here. work but uh, i recognize a tripwire when i see one so uh, if any of you are familiar with the sort of uh, underhanded skullduggery uh, cheating then perhaps you know how to deal with this yeah we step over it but would any competent <laughs> trap master not simply place a pressure plate immediately opposite of the trip wire? I don't see one. I mean, uh, that's that because is... it's probably they put the obvious thing first and then the thing behind correct, it. Correct, correct. Well, you're distracted. It is, uh, known as a ruse or a feint. Should I, should I pull a rat out of my hat? And... I mean, do you think it might be the children of the one that you sacrificed yesterday? What? <laughs> just, I've been thinking about the rats and if they have families in the hats. I don't know what's going on in there. Uh, uh, I mean, they are imprisoned in a, a magical sub-dimension. They have no future. It is fine. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I... <laughs> um, 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 
Uh, uh, this is supposed to be a spooky dungeon, guys. This is what's supposed to be my Halloween area. <laughs> you're supposed to be scared. And you're walking you're through here scared. with your dubstep. <laughs> but because you made a Halloween game, but it's turkey time. <laughs> you guys are getting scared. We are a bunch of turkeys. That was the spooky part. <laughs> Okay, I realize in the moment I may have said something unsettling to the animal loving child. Peep, I am uh, very yeah, well, sorry. Guess me. what, Professor? I can also pull frogs out of this hat, so. <laughs> pull the frog out. And all the future less frogs. You wouldn't dare. I think when the frogs don't have families, so. I'm going to. Now frogs step have away. immense families. <laughs> step away from the tripwire. You put that frog back where it came from. I, 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 I cannot. I literally can't. Well, now you have pulled out an amphibious being into a cave encrusted with ice. You're murderous. You're yeah. unhinged, Pip. Well, you drove me to do this. And this uh, sudden disrespect for amphibic life is unsettling. Now step away from the tripwire. I think you need to take a step back. Reevaluate your life decisions. <sighs> well, I'll... I mean... Uh, maybe I'm, Granny was right. Uh, I don't know about what, but maybe something. I put the frog down. It can go wherever it wants. The frog sticks to the ice. <laughs> and now you have adhered <laughs> its skin to its ice. It's only freedom <laughs> should its flesh be flayed from its pads. You are truly a sadistic. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm dying. <laughs> so right, the people, this is time for a valuable lesson. This is why you did not dabble in conjuration <laughs> magic without knowing what you were doing. Now, this frog can either stay here, freeze, starve, <laughs> and die in a slow, agonizing death, or you take the responsible adult course of action and you put it out of its misery. Oh, <laughs> Don't make me do that. I will make you watch in either case. <laughs> will you watch it slowly die? I know you can understand it. Listen as it begs for freedom in its life. Oh, I don't want to. Ima oh, imagine you can't. Aaron the frog is croaking so loudly. Im imagine Aaron looking at Tekka with like the most bewildered expression. <laughs> he hasn't said a word throughout all this. He he doesn't dare to. Sunny is covering Brooke's ears. <laughs> what have you learned, Pip? I <laughs> I create bonfire. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> can the professor sing him cast a spell? Can he try to like you shove him or like slap him across the face to stop him? <laughs> a physical counter even... spell. Oh, you know, let me put it out of its misery. Oh no, the professor's gonna have to counter spell your kid. <laughs> Okay, no, no, stop. I got it. it, it this was just... It, it, you have to understand the content. Jesus, Pip, what were you about to do? <laughs> what? What? No, just just stop. Just stop. Stop. You're, you're fine. The lesson is learned. Yes. Don't, this is like don't hyperventilating at this point. <laughs> just, just get it. The professor is going to cast precipitation to chill, warm, or flavor a cubic foot of non-living material, and he's going to warm the ice underneath the frog <laughs> enough to pick it up. Ah, uh, do I remember... <laughs> do I remember correctly that the animals from Pip's thing, like, they try to run away? Yeah. <laughs> okay, um... Pontifex, roll, roll a dexterity check. Oh, no. Can I try to catch it with Mage Hand? <laughs> uh, roll your check first. Oh. Alright, come here, you little shit. I'm trying to save you. 
Okay, so <laughs> the as soon as the ice is, is warm enough that the frog detaches itself, it immediately leaps. And you try to catch it in midair, and like, you, you don't even come close. And so you're like, okay, uh, mage end time, right? And so you're preparing to cast your spell, but the frog happens to land right on that trip wire. From its original. Oh my god! A split and second, we <laughs> look to each other. <laughs> Both <laughs> Pontifex back. and Pip are suddenly um, <clears throat> showered in these le- little metal marbles from the ceiling. <laughs> That's all that happens. They scatter everywhere, they make a lot of noise. It hurts a little oh. bit. Oh. Well, that's annoying. That... You were going to kill a frog for that. How yeah, is people, the frog what is wrong doing? with you? Well, the now that is... the frog has successfully <laughs> attached itself to the ice again. Yeah, the frog is stuck to the ice just further up ahead. And so th- this time you mage, mage hand, hand yeah. the frog first. <laughs> you grab and the frog then first. The water. Yeah. <laughs> and you pick up this poor terrified frog. And then, yeah, the, the professor is going to He's going to, uh, uh, I've got to have a piece of cloth in my inventory for sure. Do I? <laughs> I do. I have multiple blankets. Uh, it's going to be gone in an hour anyway. For whatever. Fine. It's uh, the, not, it's not, a, not even a real no The professor <laughs> is going to, uh, dip like his coat tail, I guess, like the, the end of his coat into this newly melted ice water. Uh, and then bundle the frog in it and then press the digitate the coat thing to warm it up to give this frog a warm, wet you swaddle a frog. blanket. I, I swaddle this frog in a warm, that, wet, uh, right. raggedy coat blanket. That is, that is a very pampered frog. Uh, Pip, roll a deck save. Its okay. hour will be the best hour of its life before it tastes the sweet release of death. Mm-hmm. 17. Okay. Um... <clears throat> As the professor is doing this, you you hear a rattling metal noise from directly above you, and you immediately step aside, and a bucket falls down. It would have hit. It would have fallen right on your head if you hadn't moved. What? Why? Is there anything in the bucket? <laughs> I'm not even <laughs> mad. I'm just annoyed. <laughs> I'm just no, but it, it like. You're a kid. I feel like you might have done that thing at some point where you put a bucket on top of like a, a doorway so oh, the first person to walk through. So you figured he was trying to figure, hold alone us. You figured this had like the marbles inside it. I take the bucket. <laughs> you take the bucket <laughs> with you. It's a standard metal bucket. Slightly dented from the fall. I'm having a bad day. <laughs> let's let's just go. It should probably be cautious. This still might have been a decoy. Yeah, right. Is it yourself? Apparently, if you flip a frog on its back and just like rub slash press its belly a bunch, it'll fall asleep. <laughs> and Hard on that, we're going to take child. a ten-minute break. <laughs> God. Enjoy, enjoy your tidbit of information. Uh-huh. I need to relax my cheeks because they are hurting <laughs> from laughter. Well, the professor is performing one-handed CPR on this frog and attempt to make this. <laughs> oh. It's very cool. <sighs> oh my goodness! Uh, <laughs> What's happening? Spooky dungeon. Yeah, very spooky. All right, I'll see you five minutes before three in. Is that yeah. the video for the break? <laughs> We're ready to resume. Who is taking the lead this time? After the uh, bucket accident. I think it's uh, me. It's you? Okay. <clears throat> uh, you don't have to roll anything. We, we still have to resolve the previous one. Oh. Yeah? This, yeah, I'm asking about which character is leading the group rather than which player oh. wants to roll yeah. a die. Hey, perfect! I, yeah, good timing. Oh, I still think it's me, because <laughs> it just it. sort of stormed off. Aww. Nearly slipping on the metal marbles. Yep, 
Yep. Um. He probably does a little bit and swears and <laughs> kicks <laughs> some and keeps going. Aww. Okay. Do you all think I maybe went a little too far with the lesson? I, I mean, he seemed, he's already having a really, really hard time. All right, all right. I, I, I had a temporary lapse of uh, short-term memory and forgot where we are and why we are here. Uh, and I thought it, it just... Yeah, I messed up. My mistake. You sh should probably try to talk to him. He does seem pretty upset. Yeah, but we try to talk to him when he's upset. He's like uh, trying to talk to a wall that is on fire. Don't really get anywhere, and it sucks the whole time. Because of the fire. So is he the wall or the fire in this metaphor? <laughs> he is both. He is the wall because we will get nowhere, and it is the fire because talking to him like this is unpleasant. I don't like fire. You could have fooled me. Uh, no, in fact, I have such a disdain for fire. My go-to to hurt things is to subject them to it. Anyways, sidetracking again, I, I made an oops, uh, and I feel like I have to do something to fix it, but I feel like maybe now is not the time, it is a little bit too soon. No? I mean, you, you would know him better than I would to know what would help in this situation. He's going to turn himself into a gigantic ape and murder me in the next combat. I'm going to go talk to him. <laughs> <laughs> Pip. Pontifex, you look up. Pip is gone. <laughs> you all scramble I will, to chase uh, after I'm him. I'm just gonna use his mage hand to like sweep marbles, like <laughs> like Zamboni his way <laughs> through his <laughs> ice floor. Yeah, and, and in, 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 in your arms life. you have this little bundle with a f wet, warm <laughs> frog inside it, uh, and your mage hand is uh, <laughs> making way for you. S -s -s you're splitting the metal marble waters uh and the party yeah <laughs> well, is the party coming yes yeah okay. totally wrong. oh thank god <laughs> sigh and go after them <laughs> i need cheerleaders <laughs> just Back carefully making sure there is not in fact a pressure plate behind the home alone tripwire if there was both pip and pontifex would have walked, okay walked on it already uh, eventually, you guys catch up to, to Pip. Pip! What? I'm sorry, the lesson was maybe a bit much. I forgot that we're here because of your granny and the curse and your life is a mess and there's the woman under the cave that is the sister that you can't kill but they're going to do bad stuff anyways and there's no way in which we have a good outcome of this. I'm very sorry. It, it was unnecessary. Would you like to pet the warm, wet frog? And Bonifix will hold up the frog and squeeze it just enough to let out a little ribbit. <laughs> like what a squeaky did it toy. say? <laughs> <laughs> um, let me let me read your item description real quick. What's it called? Where is it? Hat of vermin. It's Boom. Hat of vermin. Neither friendly nor hostile. It be behaves as an ordinary creature of its kind. Um, it's a moderate frog. It tries to get away from you as quickly as possible. Uh, okay, so it it is being held against its will, but it has reached that moment where it, it is like actually this is kind of nice. So the the little, the little ribbit <laughs> that comes uh, through the bundle is one of like confused relaxation. It just uh... this isn't great, but I don't hate it. It says in one ribbit. <laughs> Pip just pulls the scarf a bit further up his face and his eyes are downcast. He just says, And I really like Granny. Yeah. In this particular instance, yes, but generally, no. I messed oh, up. Pip's gonna look back at the group. Was, was it the right answer? Fear and gives him a thumbs up. He's so desiring. <laughs> <laughs> so 
sorry little guy. It just, I just wanted to put it, it into perspective that uh, despite your young age, how, how old are you again? Yes. Twelve. In only a life of twelve years, you have already taken a number of lives that eclipses that number, which is not standard for the upbringing of a child. And I worry that perhaps the the severity and magnitude that comes with death is perhaps being lost on you to an extent i know that you care but Not i feel good. as if you don't have an aversion to it that one naturally should and that you you perhaps don't think of death as a potential negative outcome for some of your actions maybe dial it back a bit so i i just i wanted to put it in the form of a uh, participation lesson, uh, like a lab. And it maybe backfired just a little bit. And for that, I apologize. I have failed you as a, a impromptu instructor. Yeah. For perhaps the first time in 400 years. As I am so great at my job, but this specific time I have, I have uh, made a blunder. Are we done? I thought we might be, but that response is less <laughs> than satisfactory. Uh, uh, are you hypothetically harboring thoughts of polymorphing yourself into a gigantic ape to get your vengeance at a later date? Not on you. Oh, that is that was relieving and then concerning as I read the malice in the subtext. Against whom? Pip just uncomfortably uh, starts scratching his hair and... Pontifex is going to shield the frog just a little bit. <laughs> As if hiding the frog from Pip's potential wrath. The frog had nothing to do with this. I know. I'm... I'm just... I don't... I don't know... I don't know how to talk about this. Okay? Write about it. Maybe we should take a minute. I'm just, I'm just so done with this. With with what? That is vague. I, I just, I didn't ask for any of this. Uh, not and everything that happens is things we ask for sometimes I it don't. happens and we just deal with it you have been dealt a, a bad hand I don't know why I don't know why my parents got messed up with some devil I don't know why I was born being able to s speak to a frog I don't know why <laughs> granny wanted me why she calls me Aster why I need to get these ingredients I don't know shit okay language I'm just <laughs> I mean, no one is born knowing everything. Some people just, they get dealt what they're dealt. And it's not what you're given, it's what you do with it that matters. Does that make sense? 
Oh, I'm not real happy with what I've done with it either. You can... You can look back. You can dwell on things. Let it fester, or... You can... Let it go and move on. We're about to walk deeper into this place where there's waiting for us someone who I killed because he wanted to avenge his wife and his kids, which I also helped to kill. Do you want to turn back? I just don't know why I'm owed vengeance when when I'd kill somebody for trying to get it against me. Hip, would you like a hug? Uh... Might help a little. Yeah, okay. And Viren will just kneel down and hug him. Hip, um, for all the cold in this cave, you're given one brief moment of warmth. I'm just so afraid because everyone I get close to Talix is gone we really miss him <laughs> Feel like it's my fault. He's gone. Pip, that is not your blame. And we will find him again. Talix is not gone. Squeak is not gone. You and we are still here. And when we meet Granny's sister, you do not need to speak with her. All you need to do is listen. I just don't want to be like her. And you are not. Already thinking the thought, Pip, you are not like her. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I'm slowing us down again. We can... we can take a minute. It seems... This is, seems to be pretty safe right here. Unless there's more buckets going to fall on us, but I think we can handle it. <laughs> I'm good. <clears throat> I'm good. And you're certain? Mm-hmm. And Pip, it really does feel like a weight has been lifted off your shoulders. Like this sadness that had taken over you, it's gone a lot quicker than you would have expected. Perhaps that's just what it's like when you grow up. You feel a lot better. 
ready to continue. Let's um, maybe maybe we'll f maybe we'll find the other metal in here. Maybe we'll find a diamond as big as Brooke's head. And wh whatever else that you're looking for, that I honestly forgot what we're supposed to be looking for. It's been a long few days. Day? I don't even know how long it's been, honestly. Let's, um, let's go. You resume traveling through the cave. For a while, everything is somewhat quiet. No more buckets fall on you. Uh, no features attack you. Uh, after after a while, measuring how long it's been is uh, a little difficult. You're making your estimations, and at times it feels like you've been walking for walking for days, and at times it feels like you've only been down this particular passageway for no more than a few minutes. But eventually, the general consent among the group is that you're all tired enough to warrant sitting down for at least a, a small while. Um, and uh, as you're just taking a break, letting your legs rest, uh, Tekka, you're preparing to take care of Oli. And there is this brief moment where you reach into your belongings and you don't feel him. And there is panic already mounting in your chest, but then there he is, just curled up in a ball. Uh, in the little space in your belongings and you pull him out and uh, he was not sleeping just but he, he does look a little a little tired uh, but also ready to eat and so you find a good spot to place down a blanket and uh, lay it on the ground and put Ollie on it and uh, you go to uh, you, you go through your belongings again and this time something actually is missing. You have a couple of wooden bowls, very flat, um, that they're easy enough for, for Ollie to reach, and both of them are missing. This cave is playing tricks on us. Again, more things are missing. What is gone? Ollie's feeding bowls. It's been, been with him as long as we have bonded. It's not essential. But I believe it's intentional. Someone knows about us. What would hurt? Was uh, this, this rock of peeps, was this a particularly significant rock? Anyone? Oh, um, I mean, I use it to, um, to consult the stones. I like it. He also like, throws it, it at things. I, I mean, like it made the, me the really the sad when it rock? was gone. Like, I laid on the ground and had a crisis. I, I, I don't mean to interrupt. Arin speaks up from his own corner where he uh, had sat down on, and he has his backpack in front of him and some of his belongings scattered on the ground. And he says, uh, I'm also missing something. My, um, my wand. For the tower. Mm hmm. The only other method we have of summoning it, it's. it's uh, it was definitely on me. Of course it would be here. Does Pontifex still have the leaf? 
Does Pontifex what? Still have the leaf. Um, to you, summon the tower. Yeah, you 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 check your belongings. The leaf is still there, um, and the astrolabe is still there. Um, you just you just go over everything just to make sure, and you're not missing something. You have something extra. You have. Uh, Oh yes, the werewolf has the leaf. That that that's right. Um, the the leaf was oh. one thing that was that was gone. Okay. Uh, thank you for the reminder. That, that that's correct. Yeah. <clears throat> um. Instead of missing something, Pontifex, you have something extra that doesn't belong to you. You have a couple of small bowls. Aha. Uh -huh. He'll pull them out and place them right on the ground. If something is not taking from us, something is moving things. You believe me now, then? I do. Pip, I did before, should... but the... Pip, you should know. Your stone was in my pocket. Well, why, why would it be in your pocket, Tekka? The same reason all these bowls were in Pontifex's possession. I do not know if this is some strange trickery magic or if this is deliberate to try to get us to turn against each other, to, to blame each other for our missing belongings as if by a child. Then, then maybe one of us has Aaron's wand? I'm gonna start digging Precisely. through stuff. Inventory check. Inventory check. Uh, the one who finds our swan is Pip. Oh, I think I found it. That's that's the one. Yeah. You sh you might want to put it in a bottle. I'll <laughs> <laughs> I'll consider it. Thank you. I'll I'll just take it back. Yeah. What do you have, Virian? Do you have uh. Brooks? Uh, toenail clippers. <laughs> <laughs> um, v Viren, you go through your belongings. I feel like she would notice. Those are so heavy duty. <laughs> the first thing that you check for is your gun. And it's gone. Brooke holds up a gun. Aha, <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh, yeah, well, now it's time gonna for get... the revenge. <laughs> Plot effects pulls a fucking <laughs> rifle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. how the tables have turned, gnome spawn. <laughs> and the gun turns up in Aaron's belongings. Like, uh, there's a moment where, where he says, what is? Oh, no, 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 no. And he like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> as if he could explode in his hands at any moment, he immediately just <laughs> it's, almost... It's, probably, it's actually, it is loaded, so you should prob ah. probably not point it... All right, I, it is fine. Take it, take think it. of it like a wand that can only cast one very deadly spell. <laughs> Bullet. It Bullet. casts gun. It casts inflict wound. At range. <laughs> it deals pain damage. It's piercing, but same thing. Um, the worst of them The all. gun is miraculously safely returned to Virion. <laughs> uh, and Brooke and Sunny themselves, they end up like trading each other's items to one another. They're both fine with it. <laughs> They're like, this is good. <laughs> They're both size for for balls. <laughs> They're literally wearing each other's shoes. It's very cute. <laughs> <laughs> they haven't even noticed that they accidentally traded their shoes like a few days ago. <laughs> <laughs> they changed top knots and they're like, yeah, this is still good. <laughs> <sighs> so what what do we do about this? I mean some of these things, if you know, you had been without your ball, without a weapon. Well, that is the strange thing. The, the astrolabe was uh, misplaced. No one else had it. Huh. It was found. I think we just need to keep like our actual hands on the things that are most important to us. Um, do we still have the 
Hip looks around, in case anyone is listening. The Eidse and the Ukbe? Yes? I'm speaking in the language of pigs. Can you still understand? I hate that I do. <laughs> that was a very simple cipher. <laughs> That's how See, pigs talk. See, what's funny is that I have no idea what he said. Oh, <laughs> we got a seed in the book. Speaking wow. pig Latin. Yeah, I don't know pig Latin. It's the easiest thing. <laughs> yeah. Ever. Well, I know. Like I've, I've heard it. I've heard people talking. You I are don't know in the rules. Way. I don't know how it works. <laughs> Why? They do have the eat saying the ukbe. Yes. I think Varian has ukbe still, but okay. it is on my part of the table. Right, well, that is gonna... good. Uh, okay. That is a good idea. We should perhaps keep our most important things uh, on hand. And the professor is going to have his astrolabe in one, and he's going to walk over and put his hand on Aaron's shoulder. Aww. <laughs> Aaron has a brief moment of what? And, and then he maintains the most serious expression that he can, but you do see him like crack a smile for just a moment and then working really hard to hide it. Ha, huh, just kidding. He takes his hand off and grabs his staff. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. <clears throat> you all actually thought? I mean... I should have known better. I mean, no, huh? it is true, but the likelihood that Aaron will wind up in one of your backpacks without us noticing is very low. I'm not planning on ending up in anyone's backpack. And such, I decide to keep my hands on physical possessions. Yep, and I am not hurt at all. You'd fit in Talix's <laughs> backpack. We all would, Pip. We all would. <laughs> I heard that he's effects. bigger on the inside. I, I think he is hurt a little bit. Might want to apologize for that one, too. Why, why does it feel like I am hurting everyone's feelings all of a sudden? This is a very new development that has never happened before. <laughs> why is everyone so touchy and, and, and vulnerable around me lately? Arden, you are fine and very precious. However, if you were lost to this strange trick, I would lose a large modicum of respect for you. So don't do that. I, I... <laughs> You're welcome. We'll, we'll work on it. <laughs> For so everyone I, else who hasn't known Pontifex for as long as I have, the professor is actually a lot nicer than I remembered him. I've been working on it for about 50 years. He's probably 50 more. Maybe six. Six more. <laughs> everyone... Everyone is here, accounted for. Everyone's belongings are here. Accounted for. Everyone has uh, all their rocks, all their everything for your your magic for the fighting. We don't have squeak, but we're fine for now, I suppose. You know, actually, has everyone checked their backpacks for squeak? <laughs> what? <laughs> hey, let me out! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that might have been. You hear from under Orin's hat. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, I thought that's just a court actually. That... All right, I totally does check and there is that. <laughs> I didn't detect any uh, magics back then, which leads me to believe that perhaps it is not uh, an effect of this, uh, this area, but is perhaps uh, something with us. I, I think maybe it is pertinent if I were to take a, a, a 10 minutes or so and try to bring back Seraphis. And if the event that there is an invisible trickster cajoling about, she will find him. He's a long shot. Yeah, but... yeah. Do it. So uh, everyone, you know, watch your own stuff for about 11 minutes. Um, in the meantime, like 
rolls around the room uh, until he reaches Virian, and he just says, Hi. Uh, hello? Um, could, could I have another one of those? Those? Oh, uh, a hug. Yeah. Uh, of course. She'll just <laughs> kneel down and give him a tight little hug. Are you doing better? Mm-hmm. I'm, uh, I'm really glad that you're with us. I'm glad to be here. Are, are you doing better? You just asked that. Oh, and sorry. And I just said, mm-hmm. Okay. It's... <laughs> it's been stressful keeping an eye on all of you. I'm just making sure between all the falling asleep and the things moving around and... It's a lot to keep track of. Yeah. You've been through a lot lately, too. So, uh, I thought maybe you'd need one. I appreciate it. Thank you. Everyone has. Actually, I, I may have had another mental lapse. This is You're going to right. take about an hour. I give Tekka a hug, too. <laughs> <clears throat> I, I think we possibly have an hour to spare if it's going to save us more hassle down the road. Right, well, I guess take the hour to uh, gather yourselves. Do whatever this is you're doing. Get it out of your systems. <laughs> and uh, then we can move on. With clearer heads and uh, warmer chests. Are Pip and Ollie on a hug basis now? Mm, I really doubt it. I do not <laughs> think so. Uh, but, Pip, there is something I have not told you about Ollie. Oh? There, I cannot just simply... Let him rest in this backpack. Like any of us, we need to walk. We need to train and stay active. So this is something I do from time to time. Uh, and he's gonna put on like this uh, leather uh, from a leather tarp from, his rain, uh, from the raincatcher. It's just gonna like wrap it around his shoulders, and then he's just gonna like pick up Ollie and let him climb around his shoulders. That's oh. like how he gets his exercise. Oh, cool. You see, if Ollie does not get to use his claws, then he could get ill. There are no ants down here. Is Ollie gonna get hungry? In time. Being on the road, I always have reserves, but time is running faster than I expected. We will be empty at some point. Hey. But that is not today. Then we shouldn't stop for too long. There's that professor. <laughs> Staring intensifies. <laughs> <laughs> I'm busy. Yeah. Tech guy's like taking out an hourglass and just like looking at it from time to time, just seeing the sand go through. <laughs> <laughs> the the rest of you outside of Pontifex may take a short rest. Um I don't think we've done anything. 
Well, we haven't been trying hard enough. Oh? Uh, <clears throat> Ollie the pangolin uh, gets his exercise in. <laughs> and Pontifact successfully brings uh, Seraphis back. The <clears throat> the winged cat uh, reappears after the hour long of ritual, uh, looking her, her feathers and fur are as immaculate as always. She appears in just a seated position. She immediately proceeds to clean clean one of her paws. All right, sorry, fish. It is, uh, it's been a while, I hope you've enjoyed your vacation. Anyways, we find ourselves in a position where there is potentially an invisible uh, adversary that is, for lack of a better term, fucking with our shit. So <laughs> if you could uh, keep your eyes out uh, to see what we cannot. This is language. going to require your <laughs> utmost focus. I am old enough to use whatever language I please, boy. She... <laughs> anyway... She pays, she's looking with intent focus at Pontifex, and then she does like a slow blink. <laughs> in the way that cats do when they, they feel affection. Not now, Seraphis, you're embarrassing me. I need you to be the soldier. <laughs> <laughs> and then she uh, slowly stands up and she stretches and then she raises her head and looks around. She turns around and looks at each of you. And then she lets out a little meow. Great. This is Investigator Seraphis Vos Uraim Al Yeleni on the job. Oh. I'm sure this cat can do a much better job than you can. She learned from the best. Who would that be? The greatest investigator this side of Ladaria. Thank you very much. If there is something Pontifex wishes to find, Pontifex will find it. So you're you know saying I am you serious don't, when I speak in the third person. That you don't want to find it, so you brought the cat out. It hey, look, a tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> Seraphis is an extension of my skill. Also, what tunnel? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, you leave this small section of the cave of where you you've been safe enough to 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 rest your legs for a moment. Um, does Oli return to the backpack? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Um, and uh, you resume your journey. Soon enough, in the thing that breaks, that interrupts the constant chill that you have felt throughout the cave is actual warmth. And it's a, it's a strange feeling. It feels, instead of feeling welcoming, it feels unnatural. <clears throat> you can see further up ahead that there is uh, a light shining around a bend of the cave. Uh, and as you cautiously approach and you look around the corner, you find your destination, what appears to be the lair of a witch. You see twisted, thorny roots that kind of resemble serpents writhing on the walls. You spot a small <clears throat> a small altar that's frozen over, and next to it there is a cauldron that is bubbling despite uh, lacking any any flame to actually heat it. And its steam carries this bitter and utterly unrecognizable smell. You see ragged dolls with missing eyes or limbs dangling from the ceiling, held up by strings like dead marionettes. And there's broken por porcelain figures that litter the floor in unnatural poses. Other toys, including 
um, old rocking horses and disfigured teddy bears. They all cast these strange, distorted shadows on the walls. There is a wooden crib rocking gently on its own. And the moment you step into this area, a wind-up music box plays a lullaby. What would you like to do? Hello? <laughs> Your voice echoes throughout this much wider section of the cave. It echoes and echoes and returns to you. There is no reply. Granny sister? It's me, Pip. We know you. You know us. The games are over. Virion, while everyone else is calling out into the cave and beginning to uh, just their attention is very much on this area and trying to uh, trying to pick up on any movement or any sound, uh, you feel a uh, surface sitting next to you, looking up at you and just letting out a single meow. Yeah, I've never been much of a cat person. She hisses at you and walks off. Apple doesn't fall far from the tree, I see. <laughs> 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 there is no reply to Tekka and Pip, Pip calling out. It's just gonna walk in and start yeah. looking for ingredients. You step in and the, <laughs> <laughs> the sound of the uh, the broken porcelain dolls on the ground that you can't uh, avoid stepping on them and you just hear them crack under your boots. Roll an investigation check. No. <laughs> Normally I'd ask for survival when you're looking for ingredients, but you're not plucking plants from the ground. You're you're looking at labeled vials and jars. 17. And you, you find out everything in here is well organized. Um, th there is a mess uh, on like the ground and on various shelves, but as far as the area around the cauldron and the ingredients uh, and, and, and all the jars, there's even some plants that are dangling from, from the ceiling. Um, <laughs> um, it's all nice and ordered. You actually can't read the labels, but uh, um, you, you guess... Like, they're, they're sorted by type, so there's flowers on one side and roots on the other. Um, so you can kind of figure out what is what. Um, l let's do what you did last time, just send me a list of the things... Uh... Oh, actually, no, 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 what am I doing? No, it will be this one. Uh, roll a d4. Yep. Okay. One. Uh, uh, that's the wrong place. Okay. Uh, one of the things that you find dangling from the ceiling is this vine that is uh, covered in thorns and uh, a, a very unusual pale silver color. And when you very carefully reach for it, making sure you don't uh, uh, end up poking the thorns with your fingers, you find that it is as hard as metal. Um... This is uh, a silver thorn, and you can gather up to six, like, units of it. <laughs> it's like six, six vines. Six units of silver yeah. thorn. Absolute units. Love, love that. Uh, and Pip is absolutely taking it. But the biggest thing on Pip's mind is wondering if he can find these ingredients for Granny. Mm-hmm. We'll get back to that. Mm. Uh, the rest of you, what are you doing? Uh, 
yeah, I think Tekka is going to attach uh, the hand saw to his quarter staff and try to saw down some of those uh, viny thorns on the walls. You. Oh, like you're assisting Pip with taking them down? Oh, the, wait, wait. The, the dolls? No. The, what are you the getting vines. at the wall? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, you can you can help it with getting those down. Yeah, it, it does take a lot of work indeed to remove them. Uh, it looks like they're uh, growing through the ceiling, so sawing think, them would be the way to go. I think Pip would actually say, "No, Tekka, don't, don't touch that." Why not? They're my units. It's <laughs> it's Silverthorn, Tekka. Explain. I think that would it would hurt you really bad huh. fine just take a hand in the saw I mean I doubt that Pip would want the saw <laughs> um A more <laughs> um, yeah so if nothing else I think Tekka will then look at the altar that frozen altar okay go ahead and roll an investigation check I think during this I think Varian's just gonna hang back and kind of keep an eye on things just keep watch in case anything starts moving like it shouldn't move or not moving like it should or things like that. Okay, making sure that nothing sneaks up on you <clears throat> from yeah. the tunnel you just came from. Yes. Okay. Uh, that's fine. Uh, roll me a perception check while I um, handle Tekka. Yeah. Uh, and Tekka rolled a dirty 20. Mm -hmm. Um, the altar has multiple small items on it that kind of remind you of the various little tokens that Pip tends to collect and keep on his person or even in his hair. Um, there's a lot of runes inscribed on the altar. Uh, it all gives you this, like, kind of malevolent vibe, like something bad is going on here. But as far as altars go... It's not particularly big. It's just this slab of stone that is perhaps five feet long. Um, and despite the, the, the general vibe of it, what you find on it that is being actively worked on is uh, a very old plushie. Uh, it's in the... It's in the shape of a hawk bear. Uh, it's missing a wing. Uh, the wing is next to it, uh, and there's uh, items for uh, for fixing it. There's uh, there's a needle and uh, what do you call the, the help me out the thread the string yeah the thread uh, there's a needle and there's multiple different colors of threads that have been gathered here. It looks like the work hasn't quite begun but was about to. Yeah, I don't think Pip uh, or I don't think Kiteka is going to do anything immediately. Um, to sort of like look around the altar, keep uh, looking at it for now. Okay. Uh, what Pip about remembers? Oh yeah. Oh, sorry. Is nope. this is this to do with what Teka is doing? Nope. All right, then let's move on to Pontifex. Uh, I mean, he did the whole ritual thing of, of getting Seraphis out here, um, and now that she's like on the on the hunt uh, by messing with Virian, uh, I don't think the professor is <laughs> necessarily like engaged in anything. I think he's actually resting. Okay, finding a place to sit down. Yeah, exactly. He's uh, he is an old man after all. He does. This has been a lot. Mm -hmm. So Pontifex wanders up ahead, um, 
um, on his own in a part of the cave where nobody else is and gives a very brief look around and it's kind of a darker corner but there's nothing unusual or seemingly dangerous about it and there's a nice little stool that he sits on and it uh, it creaks very slightly under his weight it's this very kind of off-white color uh, and it's not quite exactly level it is just a tiny bit crooked to one side um, and it does the thing where like it has four legs and if you lean on one side and then another it moves a little bit because the legs are not all perfectly even with one another um, so it's not the best seat that he has ever found but it's okay um yeah he's uh he's gonna sit there and wobble on, on on the seat just a little bit uh he's gonna take a moment uh, close his eyes a little bit, and he's gonna like put his fingertips together in his hand as like a, in like a, a heavy concentration uh, for just a moment, and then he's going to shift the chair uh, ever so off to the side onto uh, onto ground that is just even enough to where the chair uh, no longer wobbles because he believes his chair should be a little bit more comfortable. The chair no longer wobbles. And then he is satisfied and takes his break. Okay, back to Pip. Pip remembers that dreams are the domain of witches, and he's pulling out the gem of dream sight and is going to look around the room through it. Okay. Um, you put the gem up to your eyes, and uh, the entire area is gone there is just a blank frozen over cave there's none of the furniture none of the toys none of uh, um, the ingredients that he just gathered he's still holding on to one of the thorns from uh, the, the uh, silver thorns from the very top where the, the thorns haven't grown in yet um, he's only it in the other hand still, and looking at that, it's not in his hand at all. He can see mm. his own companions, but nothing else. Not the altar, no. and Pontifex is sitting on a rock. <laughs> yeah, Pip's just gonna put the, the gem away. <laughs> Scratch his head. <laughs> anything else you guys want to do? Is there anything in that crib that's rocking by itself? <laughs> <laughs> you cautiously approach the crib and find that there is nothing moving it and also nothing inside, uh, outside of uh, a very old uh, uh, pillow and set of blankets uh, that have been gnawed on by moths over time, and one uh, broken doll that seems to have been part of an animal. Perhaps uh, um, this one would be an Unin do uh, doll. Um, the wool around its body is almost entirely gone, so it's very thin. And the head is completely missing. Okay. Squeak. All that happens is that you hear your own voice coming from the doll. Something's weird. What, what have you found? Nothing. That's what's weird. Could this be another trick? Where is everybody? <sighs> what were you expecting? Hold on, I'm gonna try something. Pip's gonna go over to that altar 
and pick up the needle and thread. Mm -hmm. And uh, would this be something that would be considered a personal item for the scrying spell? Possession or garment? I can't give you an answer. You would have to try. I'm going to have to try. Uh, Pip's going to try and scry on Granny's sister. So I believe that this would be second hand. So plus five to the save modifier, but maybe a minus four because of possession or garment. You have heard of the target. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, okay, I see. Uh, that's the same modifier, so that's for me to decide. Okay. Okay. What is your DC? 16. Well done. Okay. The way you're describing is through the topaz, right? Yeah. yeah yes. Yeah. Uh, so you focus on what little you know about this person and trying to focus your magic through the broken doll. You hold it with one hand, you hold up the topaz to one of your eyes with the other. And when you tried yesterday to scry on Squeak, nothing happened. You could see through the topaz your own surroundings. And at first, when you do the same now, your first thought is that it failed again because you see the same thing that is around you. But then you start to pick up some differences. When you look around through the topaz, you're seeing the shelves, you're seeing the dolls, you're seeing the littered floor, <clears throat> and the shape of the cave is exactly the same, but you don't see your friends. None of them are here. Even when you hold up your own hand and you look at it through the topaz, you don't see it. Uh, and then you spot some movement. You see a woman. One that you've never seen before. She is uh, um, leaning over the cauldron that is kind of close to the altar. She is very close to where Tekka is, but the eye that is seen through the topaz can see her, while your other eye can see Tekka. Uh, they're kind of overlapping, but then he moves a little bit while she remains put. Uh, and she, she has this uh, mane of hair that the word messy would not describe it. It's almost sticking straight up uh, and just going in every direction. Um, it looks like it has never been brushed, not even once. Uh, she is holding a um, one of the many dolls. Uh, this one uh, being... Uh, it, it's like... Uh, it's a doll of a cat, but it's missing the tail, and it is uh, uh, black in color. Um, it has little button eyes, but one of them is missing. And she has uh, this doll under one arm, while uh, the other hand is on the rim of the cauldron, and she's just looking intently at its contents. You move around a little bit to take a better look at her face, and she looks very old. Very, very, very old. Like, she has lived far longer than any human should be able to. You see the, the vox on her face, they are white and they're kind of twisted. They look like they could just crumble if you were to touch them. <clears throat> uh, her, her attention on the cauldron is such that you can't help but move a little bit closer just so you can see inside of the cauldron. And this really 
weird thing happens where when you look inside of the cauldron, you see the cave, the cave that you guys are in. You can see yourself looking through the gem and seeing the cauldron through which he sees himself again. And you have to look away immediately because that messes with your head really quickly. She is looking at you guys, much like you right now are looking at her. And as you come to this realization, she straightens her back and turns her head to look straight at you. And you see the smile on her face. Not a malevolent grin, but this smile of pure joy and amusement. Is there anything you'd like to do? Scrying lasts 10 minutes, so I'm just giving you a, a, a moment. Yeah. Does she, does she seem like she's going to say anything, or just sort of smiling creepily? The two of you share this moment where, like, you know that you are seeing each other. You know that she knows. And she doesn't seem particularly bothered. She just looks like she's having a good time. She runs her finger across the rim of the cauldron and then goes back to looking at it. She doesn't seem at all bothered by you seeing her. It's nothing. going to back out of the vision and take in a deep breath as his eyes uh, return to their normal dilation. And uh, he looks around at the others and says, This room is a decoy. She's... He runs over to the cauldron and takes a peek inside. Um, there is something inside. Uh, it smells awful. Uh, the liquid is very viscous and, and it's kind of this dark green color so you can't really see through it. There is no image of the cave within this cauldron. It's just a foul smelling liquid. I don't get it. She is still playing games with us. The room she's in is exactly the same as this one. And she's she's looking in her cauldron, looking at us. Maybe we, we missed something further back. Another way to go what? Uh, Pip, as you come to this realization that something is wrong here, that this this place is, is not right, it, it's not real, the entire illusion is dispelled for you. You just see the empty cave that has nothing interesting or of value, nothing in it whatsoever. Oh. Guys, snap out of it. None of this is real. What do you mean? It's an illusion. Pontifex, you instinctively stand up and look back down. And you see the stool for what it is, just a, just a rock. Hmm. A very well balanced and level rock. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it seems I have been had. Surface, did you notice anything earlier? <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, you call it. Connecting with the cat. With the cat. Yeah, you. <laughs> you, you call out to the cat and you look at what a cat is doing uh, and right now through Seraph's eyes you can see that she's making eye contact with Arn who has his arms crossed and looking down at her she <laughs> meows at him and he, he narrows his eyes and then he 
looks away from her and in the direction of the rest of the cave where, where Pip is calling out to the others and um, you just call out to her and you see him uh, through your uh, through the Tresim's eyes you see him begin to approach the rest of the group um looking through her eyes do things look any different Uh, so I checked the wording. She hasn't like heard about she, the illusion or anything. So. Right. She can she can see invisible things, but there's nothing that lets her see through illusions. And right now she doesn't right. know. So you still see the cave as that fake lair of the witch. Hmm. Interesting. It seems I was maybe too quick on my. Uh magic detection earlier how how did you figure this out pip what did you see he was i saw this lair with her in it but none of us were in it so it couldn't have been where we are so we have been misled there's got to be a way forward uh, or perhaps back when I blew through the wall with the orb, there was another crack on the opposite room. Why perhaps would she we put it? went the wrong way. No, no. She wouldn't put something like this here unless she was guarding something. The actual with the layer. illusion dispelled, no. the, the, the rest of the cave is opening up. There's more tunnels for you to go through. That way. We're close. Um, I can I can feel it. Hello? Uh, oh, hold on, I'm reading my notes. <laughs> One second. Okay. You guys are gonna move on from here? Yeah. I believe so. Alright. That means, and, and Austin, I'm sorry, but you had to strike the silver thorns from uh, your inventory. <laughs> I figured. <laughs> um, scroll, scroll, scroll. I lost my spot in the notes again. Okay, that means it's someone, someone's uh, uh, turn to roll a d8. Uh, Sid, no? This is done. Yeah. I think Jory got the last one. Yeah. Let's this is done. You also Hit know, Pip, um, because of the way scrying works, at the very least you know that the target of your scrying is on the same plane of existence as you, which That's in good. the context of my world, like planes and uh, like uh, dreams and reality are two separate planes. So, right. Um, she is not in the dream world. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's an eight, which we have. Wasn't it you who rolled an eight earlier? Yeah, literally just the last yep. thing we did, I think. Yep. We walk through this tunnel into another illusion relay. <laughs> oh, no! We literally just keep rolling the max values on these checks. Uh. Okay. Misery's womb needs to give birth already. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. a very Pip, you... weird way to put that, but I get where you're I'm picking up what you're putting down. <laughs> Pip, you rush up ahead. You pick a tunnel and you go. Um, you know that the witch is aware of your presence and um, doesn't seem worried at all. And you, you're feeling a little panicked. Uh, you pick a direction, you pick another, you lick a wall this way. Uh, and you end up in a very wide opening of the cave that is sparkling. Uh, at first, it almost looks like you're back when you guys were on the moon um, or in the moon and you could see the entirety of the cosmos from uh, down a ledge. You could see this, the night sky opening up in front of you and you could see all these stars. This is for a moment a very similar view. This dark part of the cave that is sparkling 
uh, with these, these very faint dots of light. And these dots of light are moving. They're flying around and they're moving and each of, the, of them emits a different color. They, to um, those of you who are, who are not born and grew up on Lidaria, so to all the Plurinans in the party, these would resemble fireflies. While um, they're colorful, but otherwise that that's the the idea you would get. While um, for the Lidarians in the party, you've never seen this. This is a really odd sight. Um. Even more magic at play. Can you see past the illusion, Pip? I. I'm trying. He squint very hard. <laughs> uh, I don't know. <laughs> One of these dots of light lands on your scarf, Pip. <gasps> and you, you, you're kind of cross-eyed to look at it because of how close it is to your face. And it looks like a tiny bug whose body is glowing. And the light goes away and then comes back. And it's a different color. Every time? Hey, hey, oh, and to professor. you, to you, uh, the glow comes across as language. Oh. So with this bug being so close up to you, you can see that it's saying hello. Oh, hello. Hello, you pretty little ingredient. <laughs> professor. <laughs> What's the meaning of phosphorescence again? Uh, are, are you okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pip takes out the, the bottle with his rock in it and pours the rock out. <laughs> Puts it back into his pouch. The rock has been betrayed! Holds, again. holds the bottle up. Hey, little guy. You look at this uh, cozy little bottle. You <laughs> you should get in it. Roll a persuasion check. Nine. <laughs> The bug doesn't have the best wisdom score, but still <laughs> seems uh, um, unconvinced. There is an entire wide cave for it to live in, so it takes flight, flies away no, from you. Uh, mm. What do these things eat? Professor, I need your rotting ooplu. <laughs> no. <laughs> I need your ooplu, Professor. No, it, it's not a problem with you having the ooplu. The problem is when you open it, we might all die. Oh. <laughs> I just need a little bit. Oh, right, which involves you opening the lid. Upon which time your death might be instantaneous. It is very powerful. Hold on. Uh, I think I have something magic. for this. I am carrying with me part of a sachi fruit from when we were in the jungle. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, this no. one has Gross. also been. Oh, no. <laughs> Why do you guys hold on to fruits for weeks <laughs> for at a time? For this exact purpose. Okay. The professor's is in a jar, to be fair. <laughs> Mine's just coated on the so edges of the backpack. This, this odd <laughs> smell of like really dirty feet that uh, <laughs> anyone walking behind Pip would have smelled, you finally find the source. Pip smears some of it into this jar, this Tekka, bottle. Tekka, this physically hurts her nose. Yep, yep, thought so. <laughs> Look. Hey, maybe slow death. Look, critters. Uh, food. Last one in is a rotten... Oop blue. 
<laughs> Get uh, in now! <laughs> you call out to them. Uh, their lights, they, they flicker, they change color. And you understand that the ones closest to you who bother to answer you, they let you know that uh, in uh, this stage of their life, they don't eat at all. What? All right, I'm going to have to brute force this. <laughs> I'm just going to go around and try to catch them. <laughs> <laughs> like, like slapping them and killing them or like no trying not to kill i i feel like the light maybe will go out if they're dead <laughs> what check would it be to catch bugs with your bare hands probably probably what constitution hand? probably what charisma probably charisma what? <laughs> <laughs> i was thinking probably slide a hand the whole like catching a fly, you know, it, it's like there's some slide finesse. Of end. I like that. It's a slide of end. Man, I never roll these. That are like athletics. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I am using inspiration. <laughs> I'm using my conspiration. Conspiration. Okay. <laughs> I'll take the first one. It's a natural one. Oh, more like constipation. <laughs> I think I just need one. <laughs> okay, 15. The rest of the party sees Pip just fling himself into this sea of stars. Uh, he... Uh, there is... All these different lights, different shades of it shining on Pip that um, the, it looks like his his own clothes are constantly changing color and so is his hair. Uh, he chases after the these um, bugs that for the most part disperse, but he begins to like grab one uh, out of the air, into the bottle it goes, and then another into the bottle. And usually he's missing, but he manages to, ca to catch one and then miss another and then catch another. Uh, the Tresim does the same thing with the advantage of being able to fly and uh, uh, not at all caring that these things die whenever she bites on one. Uh, the, this is a cave full of uh, uh, laser dots and she's having <laughs> a blast. Oh, heck yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Basically, wherever she goes, the, the bugs scatter everywhere and Pip can make use of the distraction to catch the ones that are flying his way. Um, it takes, a, like, after a few minutes of this, uh, perhaps about 10 minutes or so, uh, the Tresim is finally tired out and the Pip, you have a bottle <laughs> with uh, about a dozen small bugs in it. It's gonna take his uh, dagger and just poke a couple holes in the lid and uh, he realizes now that he's on a time crunch because Squeak is the one with the bag <laughs> to send things to Granny uh -oh. what was the rest of the party doing in meanwhile? Uh, yeah, I think, like, Tekka is holding his core staff, like, never seen these creatures before in his life, and is really worried about Pip just running straight into this fog of color. Uh, not really sure what's going to happen, so. On guard. Absolutely. Pontifex, when you try to look through the <laughs> Tresim's eyes for a moment, as she's doing a barrel roll through the air, it immediately makes you sick. Whoa. Nope. He pulls out, sits down on his now perfectly balanced rock. <laughs> you took the rock? <laughs> I mean, obviously. <laughs> it's not very often that you find a rock that sits perfectly level on uneven ground. 
It's like, it's perfectly level, the top part is also level enough that it's not uncomfortable to sit on. And it's like also the perfect height for you. You found like a really good rock. So yes, the professor is just that level of petty and has a respect for nature's craftsmanship that yes, he would have brought the rock. <laughs> planted it down and then sat on it and looked through uh, through Surface's eyes, immediately realized the mistake, backed out, and waits on his chair for this debacle to end. Okay. Basically, oh. he's too old for this shit. <laughs> when, when nothing terrible happens to Pip within the next uh, uh, 10 seconds, Sunny joins in on the fun. Uh, so Pip, the Tressim, and Sunny all go uh, wading through the this sea of lights, uh, and eventually um, the Tressim returns, having tired out, and she flops on her side. Pip returns with a with a full bottle of bugs that he proceeds to make holes in 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 its in its uh, um, cork. And Sunny returns with like she's been laughing while chasing the bugs, and now she has a couple that are stuck between her teeth. <sighs> <laughs> One down. For the sake of your notes, uh, uh, Austin write them down as Amber Glow Wisps. Amber Glow Wisps. That's a beautiful name for these poor things that I've <laughs> captured and will send to Granny for her nefarious You can hear the purposes. cacophonies of their cries for help and freedom. <laughs> Just a jar apart. of horror. These are the kinds of bugs that when they are adults, the only thing they're supposed to do is mate. And so they don't eat or, or drink and they just... And so like, oh, no. now their options, oh, their no, dating that pool jar has, is doing weird stuff. has significantly <laughs> reduced. <laughs> this jar gonna get freaky. Yeah, no oh, kidding. No. That's a very raunchy jar. Like a privacy curtain up or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, put that in the, in the bag. Put in a beer koozie, it'll be fine. <laughs> All right. In the next room, we're going to find some ooze, and in the room after that, we're going to find some sulfur. Who's rolling the next D8? Uh, oh, that'd be me. I don't quite know what order you guys have been going in, but I. Wait, go around just the table. Go around the table. Okay. Oh, Alright, that makes sense. Three! Okay. Not an eight. But it really isn't an eight. Alright. Half a one. You're beginning to feel quite tired. Um... You have, you still have no idea how long you've really been traveling for. Uh, but you're you're beginning to pay attention to how your bodies feel. Uh, you've been taking breaks to eat, and you've been taking breaks to rest your legs, and you're uh, starting to watch out for signs of actual, like end of day exhaustion. Uh, and right as the first person brings that possibility of maybe stopping and you start to, to look for a place that's comfortable enough to uh, to rest in. Um, the it, It's around this time that unfortunately the, the tunnel you're in is beginning to narrow. It's not at all spacious enough to rest in it and so you have to push forward. And the further up ahead you go, the more narrow it becomes and then you're to the point where you're all forced to walk in single file and Brooke's shoulders are kind of scraping against the sides of the tunnel as he goes and he has to shimmy on forward like sideways like a crab um but you can see the further up ahead finally the kid does open up and so you're all rushing towards that opening and then you all come to this very sudden stop uh the this part of the cave it leads to a precarious ice bridge that spans a deep chasm. You're all standing still, cautiously looking around. You can feel the ice already cracking under your boots. And through the partially transparent surface of the bridge, you see two things. The abyss below, dark, distant, and hungry. And some kind of creature hanging on the underside of the bridge that 
reaches with one limb onto the side and begins to climb onto it. And we'll end the session there. Um, oh, oh, no! That was spooky. <laughs> back to creepy, back to creepy. <laughs> Why why did that abyss be hungry? <laughs> it's a hungry boy. <laughs> hungry boy. Ain't no vibe and feed me. It, it? it hasn't had its kick. Oh. So it's coming for years. <laughs> <laughs> ah! Oh no. <laughs> ah, not this. Oh that. man. Boop. Oh, you better you better <laughs> All things considered it's been a pretty relaxing trip thus far on this particular Has it? day. Yeah. <laughs> None of the worst things have happened. Not as bad as At it could have been. At some point, we, we needed to just like, this is finally a good place for a long rest. We'll be fine. We'll be fine. We'll Shut do it on life. the precarious <laughs> ice bridge. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing bad will happen. We'll be I mean, it is the warlock says to the wizard after a short rest. <laughs> oh, you'll be like fun. Yeah. Always. Yeah, always. And um, next, so next week we're going to have Dennis back, but Matt is gone, right? Not correct. Everybody else though, is going to make it? Lisa? Yep. So I'm gone comes up. Yeah. next week. And the, I think the seventeenth as well. Okay, you'll have to remind me again when we're closer to the seventeenth. But thank you for um, yeah. I'll, I'll write it down. I'll and we'll the, see if I remember. I'm gone next week. Then I'm here, and then I'm gone again. Mm -hmm. Ah, alternating pontifexes. <laughs> okay, then I'm gonna. I'm just gonna boop. I'm gonna let you go. I hope you have a lovely week ahead of you. And if you don't. <sighs> I'll, I won't. I'll, oh, I'll make it Sorry. better. We can huh? watch musicals. Oh, good. <laughs> that will make it better. His favorite. <laughs> all right. Thank you for being here. I'll see you all again next time. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.